Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be going over how to make snow in After Effects using Trap Code Particular. Now, first things first, you'll want to make a new project. Make sure to go ahead and save that. Now we'll go ahead and jump in and create a new composition. Um, if you want to do 720, 1080, or if you want to go ultra high def, you can, but I'm going to work with 1080 at 30 frames per second, and we're just going to do a 10 second. I'm not worried about naming conventions for this at this time. Uh, right click, add a new solid, black solid's fine, and let's drag and drop particular on it. Now one thing I want to talk to you about is just make sure when you're making the snow that you know what kind of snow you want. And what I mean by that is whether or not if you want it to be background, midground, or foreground, um, that's really going to differentiate within whatever the scene is. And also whether or not if you want the snow to be really like wild and flurry or if you want it to be very flowing all right so let's go ahead and jump right in let's go to the emitter and let's change the emitter type to box now the box is good because it gives you kind of a 3d box to work with as the emitter and for this i am actually not going to work with the emitter size y or z we're just going to keep those as zero um let me crank this up just a little bit now we're going to change the direction to directional and let's go ahead and rotate along the x-axis and you'll see what's going to happen so you see everything's kind of coming out along that x emission area um what i'm actually going to do is let's try negative 90 i think that should be straight downward yeah, there we go, that's all I need. Now I'm gonna reduce the direction speed percentage because I think 20 is just too much. Zero is gonna be inappropriate because it's gonna make it all come down really straight. So let's maybe do, I don't know, eight. Eight should be fine. And now let's go ahead and just crank up the X emitter to be past the composition size. Something like that will be just fine. All right, and then next what we'll do, we're actually going to make the emitter start from up and above the composition. So I'm going to zoom out so I can show you what that's going to do. So in the position X, Y, we're going to go to the Y and make it go up. And if you're curious how to make it go up faster, potentially hold shift while you're dragging uh, the values and that'll help it go a little faster. Next, what we're going to do is go to the emission extras turn up the pre-run to 100 and we should be good to go the pre-run the pre-run at 100 is what's gonna allow the uh, particles to already be there at frame zero all right let's jump out of there for now and go to particle now we're gonna turn the life up to something that goes beyond the composition as well uh, no life randomness um, if you wish you could use a sprite and then you could go to texture and then what you would do is you would drop a snowflake texture in there and you would select it within this area but since we're not doing that this go around let's keep it sphere and i'm going to go with like a mid-ground look so let's maybe do the particles at three and then the size random to about somewhere around 50 or 60 percent you could go more, but if you go too much, then um, you're kind of bordering into that foreground, background, and midground look, because you'll have particles that are really tiny and particles that are very big. So let's try to, you know, just keep that variation down a little bit. And we're gonna change the opacity randomness to about 50% as well. This doesn't have to be exact. So that's pretty good for right there. Now let's go ahead and just do a quick, like two second RAM preview. All right, so we got some snow action going on, but I realized that it's going way too slow. So let's go back up to emitter. This should be the only thing we change, but it might be something you change over and over again to get the right look. So for velocity, I'm gonna actually change mine up to something that might seem fairly drastic, but 700 should be pretty good. Let's do another RAM preview, just two seconds. All right. So there's a uh, 700. That seems a little fast. I'm gonna pull it down just a tad. 
Let's go somewhere around there. All right. Now next, let's jump into physics and go to air. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop down the turbulence field, but we're not gonna work in that just yet. First things first, I'm actually gonna go to spin amplitude. I'm gonna crank that up. Mm. I'm gonna go with about 200. Let's show you what that's gonna have. All right, 200's a little wily. So I'm actually gonna bring it down just a little bit. Cause I'm kinda doing like a, a really kind of like a, a smooth snow. All right, so that's pretty good. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little bit of a direction. So that's why I made the emitter size much bigger than the composition, because now I can push over. And you'll see if I push over too far, there's this big empty space. So that's not something I'm really wanting. If I needed to do that, then I would just wanna make the emitter bigger along the X value. So we're just gonna go, let's say about 100. Um, if you did do that, you would actually wanna increase your particle count as well. So there we go. Now the snow has a little bit of a direction to it. It's got a little bit of a flurry movement. Um, if you wish, you could actually add a little bit of that spin amplitude. Uh, maybe you don't work with the spin frequency so much because if you go up too much, too fast, it's just gonna get crazy really quickly. And I'll show you right here. So this is far beyond what snow would ever do. Uh, maybe you could go up to two and then you could continue to increase the spin amplitude. Um, that might do something for you. Give you kind of that flurry effect. That's a little much for what I want. So let's go back to one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a little bit of turbulence to it as well. So I'm going to affect the position and I'm going to just kind of drag this back and forth until I get to the feel of what I want. So maybe about right there. And then the scale at 10 is already going to be too much and I'll show you you see how it's kind of just going crazy right there see that's way too much so let's bring the scale down to one as well and you'll see that it calms down quite a bit but it adds a little bit of extra variation all right so that's looking pretty good and the only thing I would really change at this point is depending on, again, whether it's a foreground or, or background snow, what you can do is go up to the emitter. And if I'm doing kind of this mid-ground snow, I might add, you know, let's go up to like 260 particles. This can be a good mid-ground snow. All right, and if you wanted to, if you needed to do all three, you can actually just duplicate, go up to emitter, just change the random seed, and then crank up the particles. Go down to the particle, change the size to one. We're gonna make our background. Let's go back to the emitter and change the velocity down to 300 because things in the background are not gonna go nearly as fast, so. Now let's press play. See how that looks at the two second mark. Here we go, it's looking pretty good. So, here we go, here's the final render for the 10 seconds. And that's it guys, that's how you make snow in After Effects with uh, using Particular. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, have a great day.